Hey boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about how we can use related facts to be able to help us solve um, a more difficult problem. So we're going to try and use some arrays to be able to help us do that. Um, so let's check out our learning goal. Our learning goal is I can find related multiplication facts by adding and subtracting equal groups in array models. Okay. So I think you guys will like this strategy as well. So let's jump in and get started. Um, for this lesson, you're going to need your whiteboard. You're going to need the template um, that has the different circles on it. You'll see it listed in the module and a blank sheet of paper to be able to cover that up. So if you don't have those, pause the video real quick, go grab them and then click play when you're ready to uh, with all those materials. Okay, so for our first problem, we're going to add two known smaller facts to solve for a greater um, unknown larger fact. Okay. Um, so basically all that means is we're going to use two smaller multiplication problems to solve a bigger multiplication problem. Okay. So the first thing that I need you to do is I want you to have your template in your board, in your dry erase pocket. And then I want you to cover up part of the array with a blank paper to show five rows of three. Okay. So just like I have up there, five rows of three. Leave that paper covering the rest of the array, and I want you to write um, a box, like draw a box around it, and then write a multiplication fact that matches that problem, or matches that array, excuse me. Okay, so I'm going to do that same thing. Okay, so let me share with you what I have. If you're not finished, click pause and keep working, and then click play when you're ready to share. Okay, so I came up with 5 times 3 equals 15 because the first number is the number of groups. The second number is how many are in each group. So I have 5 rows, 5 groups, and then I have 3 in each group. Okay, so 5 times 3 equals 15. You could count by 3's as you solve that. You can go 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, okay, to be able to do that. Or if you needed to count each circle, you could do that as well, okay? Now, what I would like for you to do is I want you to move the paper so it shows um, 7 times 3, okay? Leave that box there, okay, that you have and just slide your paper down to show 7 times 3. So remember, this is 5 times 3, so what else do you have to slide down? How much more to be able to show 7 times 3? And then I want you to shade in the circles that you um, now see as your 7 times 3, okay? Don't shade all these up here. Those are your five times three. I want you to shade the part that you add, okay? All right, so if you're not ready, click pause because I'm going to share mine. Okay, here we go. That would be six times three and then seven times three. Notice how I um, shaded those in. I didn't shade them in perfectly. Just a quick little shade, okay? Um, now what I want you to do is I want you to write... Um, next to your multiplication, next to your array, next to maybe like your five times three that you already have, I want you to write a multiplication sentence that describes just the shaded part of your array. So now just this part down here, let me circle, just this part down here that you shaded in. Okay, just that singular part right there. Okay, I'm going to share with you what I came up with. 2 times 3, because there's two rows with 3 in each row, okay? So how many 3's did you add to 5 times 3 to show the array of 2? So how many of the shaded part did you add? Two threes. yeah, absolutely, okay? So now let's take a look at this, okay? I have seven threes all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's why I came up with this seven threes. Equals five threes that I came up with up here and two threes. So if I were to add my five threes that are in the red and my two threes that are in this purple shaded area, I would end up with seven threes, okay? Um, remember the rows, um, seven rows of three is the same as five rows of three plus two rows of three. No, same exact thing, okay? So we already wrote the totals for the two parts of our array. Now let's add those to the total for the whole array. Okay. 
Okay, so let's look at this, friends. 7 times 3, which is our whole array, equals the same as if you took 5 times 3, this first part, and added it to the bottom of 2 times 3. It's going to give us the same thing. So let's kind of break this down a little bit. If you have 5 times 3, what's the product of 5 times 3? 15. Okay, now I'm going to add that to the product of 2 times 3. What's the product of 2 times 3? That's our shaded part. 6. Okay, so now if I add all of those together, that's going to give me the total of 7 times 3. So if I have 15 plus 6, that gives me a total of what? 21. Good job, friends. Okay. Fantastic job. Okay, so that's how we're taking those factors. We took this whole array right here. We broke it apart. Instead of being able to solve right away 7 times 3, we broke it apart into something smaller of 5 times 3 plus 2 times 3. Okay, you're breaking those that big factor apart of 7 times 3 into something that's smaller, maybe a little bit easy for us, easier for us to be able to solve first. So in our last example, we used two smaller known facts to be able to solve an unknown larger fact. And we use addition in that example. In this example, we're gonna use subtraction of two known smaller facts to be able to sol solve an unknown larger fact, okay? So that sounds kind of tricky, but we're gonna, this time we're gonna use subtraction to be able to solve our problem instead of addition like we just did. So let's jump in and take a look at this example. So if you're looking at this array here, you are seeing that there are 10 rows of three in this example. Now, I'm trying to solve the problem nine times three. Well, for this one, I'm going to use this whole array to help me solve this problem because nine times three is very close to 10 times three. But 10 times three is an easier problem to solve because I can count by tens to get that total. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to draw a box around um, 9 times 3. Okay, so there's my box around 9 times 3. That's really the problem that I'm trying to solve here, but I'm going to use 10 times 3 to help me. So if I jump back over here, I'm going to actually use 10 times 3 to solve. So we can count by 10 to be able to do that. So let's count by 10s three times. So 10, 20, 30. So 10 times 3 equals 30. Now, if we look at all these, we know that we have nine threes here. So I need to subtract something from these 10 threes, which is my total array, to get to my nine threes. So how many um, do I need to subtract to get to back to that nine threes? Because right now I have 10 threes in this whole array, but I only need nine. So what do I need to subtract? Yeah, one three, okay? So 10 threes minus one three equals nine threes, right? Because I'm left with just the nine, okay? So to solve this problem, I have 10 times three, which is 10 times three gives me 30. And then I'm subtracting one three, which is three. So um, 30 minus three is going to give me 27. So nine times three equals 27. So notice friends, all that we did with this problem is we basically took 10 times three and we subtracted one times three. Oops times three. Okay, so that's how we got our one three. So really it's the 10 minus the one gives us the nine. Okay, so friends, great job with today's lesson. You guys did an awesome job. You completed the lesson with a bang. Um, I hope you guys had fun practicing these two strategies. Please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice today. If you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye friends.